Okay, so gas exchange. The efficiency of gas exchange in lungs and things like that, we're going to look at a few different types, is totally dependent upon diffusion. And diffusion is dependent upon three factors that affect the rate of diffusion. Try and think of those whilst I write this out. Okay, so three things. We need a high surface area. Doesn't matter which order you say these in. We also need a short diffusion distance. And we need a high concentration gradient. So all the answers on this topic are basically going to revolve around these three things and how organisms have organs that manipulate and exploit diffusion to get their oxygen, basically, generally for respiration. This video we're going to look at two. We are going to look at insects and how insects do that. And we're going to look at how fish do that. Single-celled organisms, we've already mentioned in the previous video, do that via simple diffusion over their large surface area to volume ratio. So I'm going to draw a very bad insect here. I'll probably draw the rest of the diagram and then do some notes underneath. So there's my insect. I'm now going to zoom in upon the, the carapace or the outside of this uh, insect. So that's my magnifying glass zooming in. Okay. So what's going on here? We're going to label a few things. We've got a hole in the outside of the insect. And this hole here is called a spiracle. It then branches into some tubes that we call trachea, just like our trachea in our windpipe. And then we've got basically the cells line ourselves along the trachea and their direct diffusion. I mean, if you study these things in a bit more detail, it's not, that's a little bit of a lie, but this is all that you need to know for the exam. So it's only detail I'm going to tell you. On the outside, thing I'm going to refer to later is a waxy cuticle, and that's going to help save water, prevent evaporation going out. Okay, so they're the things we need to know about the structure, and now let's put that into some notes. So, air enters through holes called spiracles. Oxygen diffuses down the concentration gradient along the trachea. Which are basically the pipes, the trachea. The trachea are closely surrounded by cells. And then oxygen diffuses into the cells. I'm going to put diffusion in red. It's a pretty key that you know that it is diffusion. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit on water loss. There's only a couple of bullet points that you need to know here. Something I've just missed off this diagram is actually ventilation. I'm just going to stick it in here. So ventilation, they can actually pump their body. They call it abdominal pumping. And that basically just helps the flow a bit like a lung, like just squeeze a little bit pop the air out and then it creates high pressure and it pushes the air out and then it can suck more air in ventilation. So this helps to maintain a high concentration gradient. So on water loss, well basically the body is covered by a waxy cuticle and this helps to reduce uh, evaporation. It also can close its spiracles. If it's really dry, it closes its spiracles. Obviously, it needs some open so that it can respire a little bit, but insects can. Okay, fish, let's move on. Again, I'll draw the diagram, and then I'm going to put some notes down.
Okay, so I've drawn my diagram here, start with a little fish. If we zoom into the gills, we actually end up with these gill filaments here. And then if we look at one of those filaments, the layers, uh, then we, we have something like this. So the blood circulates in one direction. So it's going like this and the water is pumped across by muscles in the opposite direction. So let's make some notes. So filaments and lamellae, which are the names for these things in here. Lamellae means like layers. This is a plural. We're not going to worry about the singular. Filaments and lamellae have a large or a big surface area. This increases the efficiency of diffusion. They have a thin epithelium, which means la layer. Yeah, they have the, the cells here making up the, the wall, the barrier, are very thin. What does that mean? You have a short diffusion distance. Okay, the most important thing is that the blood and the water go in opposite directions. Blood going this way, water going this way. This is called a countercurrent flow. Counter for opposite, current for direction. What does this do? Well, this maintains a high concentration gradient. How does it maintain a high concentration gradient? Well, it means that the water that's here, we've got water, the high is fresh water coming into the gills. It's got more oxygen in it. And this is next to the blood that's got the highest O2. And so water is always next to a the blood that's got a lower concentration of oxygen than it does. So water is always going to have higher concentration of oxygen than the blood. So water, oxygen is always going to diffuse from the water and into the blood. If it went the other way around and it went in the same direction, then maybe at the end, when you came out the other side, the blood would have more oxygen in the water and then water would diff, oxygen would diffuse in the wrong direction. So that's why it's important. What other things do we have? Well, we've got circulation of the blood. What does this do? This replaces blood that's saturated with oxygen. And we have ventilation of the water. And this replaces the water that's low in oxygen.